coming up next time on the Diddly Dumb Podcast, an interview with Kevin Davis, director and producer of 30 Years in the TARDIS. But Doctor Who's always been there, so it was kind of, that was important to me. It was important that what was essentially my favourite programme was going to be celebrated properly. Um, in fact, I stumbled into one of his edits when I was looking for Mike Tucker. I was told, oh, he's in such and such, and I realised he was in there editing oh. Dimensions in Time, doing effects and things. And uh, I, I stumbled in, JT looking straight at me, and I went, I made my excuses <laughs> and backed out. He realised, and I think maybe those boys, you know, um, Williams and Lucas, they probably they probably made him realise that our generation loved him. Your unadulterated love. Someone said, "So long as you, uh, so long as you treat him with respect and let him know that you think he's the governor, everything will be fine." So I made sure that I did tell him that, and I think you know, I was quite awed by by him. I have to say. He's such a rogue. I've got so many funny stories about him over the years. But I'd seen that through the keyhole and I'd noticed a load of Doctor Who videos on the shelf and I thought, ah, oh, maybe his children are Doctor Who fans. It turned out, no, they're not his kids, they were his. Uh, he admitted he hadn't seen the show since it was William Hartnell. So most of what he said was fed to him by me, I have to tell you. Johnny Vegas? What kind of a name is that? A bit like there used to be a comedian called Bing Hitler. <laughs> now there is a Doctor fan, do you know? You know, that was a, a highlight of my life, was standing on the stage at BAFTA presenting my film, with a lot of my heroes sitting in the audience. And so we got up really early that morning, and we said, oh, well, while we're having our, you know, bowl of cornflakes or whatever, let's shove on a couple of these tapes and see what's on there. And I remember Andrew going, huh, do you know what's going to happen? Any moment now, there'll be a clip of some seaweed monsters or something, you know, so it's a throwaway comment. And within moments, yeah. there was that six second clip of Power of the Daleks. And we kind of now oh, went up. Of the Daleks blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> it was so uncanny. <laughs> we roared, we laughed and played it back immediately. So by the time we then got to doing the shoot with Ian Levine, he was so suspicious. I've got the footage still. We didn't use it in the programme in the end, but I did it in case because we thought he was going to explode or something, you know. But no, no, we just wanted to get your reaction when we show you a bit of Doctor <laughs> Who you haven't seen before, you know, you haven't seen since it was first on. And I, was, I was 17 and I was covering it for a fan magazine, um, for TARDIS magazine for the Doctor Who Appreciation Society. And I think I was only asked along because I'd just got a new tape recorder for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that's when I first met Douglas. On the day that we had um, uh, Jenny Linden and Roberta Tovey in, we found out that Roy Castle, by sheer fluke, ah. was doing a record break as Christmas special, yeah. I think, in the studio next door, same day. There was still a feeling that you really should get equity people. So I was asking around in Doctor Who fandom, does anyone know anyone with an equity card? So that I could get fans in because I knew they'd put the extra effort in. And that's how come Mark Gatiss, who I didn't know at the time, ended up in one of the Daleks on the bridge, on Westminster Bridge. But I filmed this stuff and while we were there, Simon Jones, who I'd only met a couple of times at that point, was going through Alastair Botel's book and said, oh, look, that's me. And there's a photograph of him as the Master of Khan in the Seven Keys to Doomsday stage show. I had no idea that he was in that until I went and dug out my copy because I'd been to the show as a kid, you know, in Christmas 74. And I actually, at one point, I had Ray Harryhausen and Jerry Anderson in the same studio and I was able to introduce them. We're contemporaries, I don't think I got to tell him that, but anyway. So I've always been bewildered as to why, how come he's so passionate about the Davison era? Because to, from my age group, I thought by that point, we were slightly burnt out on Tom Baker. You know, he's like Steve and Stephen is kind of like a, a cross between the sort of Terence Dix mm. and a bit of Barry Letts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or, or a 
Hinchcliffe and Holmes, you know, but mainly Holmes. 